this art allows me a platform to discuss, and as Diana, Diana said, be in dialogue with each other about who we are, what are, what are our histories, and um, the importance of education in our community. Okay. Um, what's going to happen next is uh, we're going to have a reading of excerpts of the play, uh, but before that, um, everybody in our studio audience here uh, has uh, received this little handout, um, uh, which are basically questions for talk back. Uh, and these are things that I, I hope you'll be looking at as you're listening to the play. Um, so that, uh, based on the excerpts you've just read, please share short phrases that would describe your initial responses to the play. Uh, based on the excerpts you have heard, what would you say this play is about? Based on the excerpts you've just heard, what events in the play stand out most or confuse you? And based on the excerpts you've heard, uh, the director, Professor Fanny Green, would like us to talk about the themes of identity and history that are present in the play, uh, such as self-identity, cultural identity, oral history, recorded history, and are there other themes in the play that are relevant to society today? Uh, and then we'll finish up with any further questions you might have for the playwright, the director, or the cast. Uh, so that is really, as far as the round table, to me, the, the most exciting part about this whole thing. So I hope you'll be uh, coming up with some wonderful questions for us. It will make my job as a moderator much easier. Uh, <laughs> so at this time, what I want to do is uh, switch who's sitting where uh, and have uh, Fanny introduce the performers for this stage. Wife, black and seminal, a witch. 
Hoodberg, his son, also playing wonderful. Horse Powell, town elder and medicine man, black and seminal. And Jean, his granddaughter, the first lady of the church, also playing wind song, the music of nature. Fat Graham, her husband. Colorado, an orphan, the town Casanova. Prologue. Number two wrestles his angel, or black bear embraces red coyote. Night. The white eye of heaven falls on two men in a standoff, their eyes locked to kill or fuck. One is number two, age 43, black, built like a mountain. The other is Trowbridge, 45, Seminole, built like a tree. He wears a sheriff's badge. The year is 1850. One of us is about to die, figured as much. My son figures you on account you killed my boy. Meant to bruise him. Don't matter. Meant to nick him. But he kept at me. Made me mad and I got happy with my blade. He cut him round like a cake. A slice in every direction. He shouldn't have got into my sweet tea. I saw him both in the creek evening past. He had a robe. He had my daughter when she was a whore. What no matter. You knew to come to me if you had a problem with mine. You knew to come to me if you had a problem at all. That's the law in this town number two. I say what gets killed. Just because you share it don't mean you massive. Them days is dead. I'm a free man now, and I ain't got to get your permission to kill something. You know that's something to your son. Come close in so I can kill you. My woman wants your head to make a suit. Told me not to come back till I had it. And you are the woman's wife. Yeah, she be my man. Figure she already got my balls. God just needs your head. <laughs> How you doing it then, Trowbridge? Bring you a rope? No, I ain't got time to watch you hang around. Gotta kill you naturally. Bare hands, crack your neck, axe off your head, and leave the body for the birds. Well, it's a way to go. No hard feelings, though, if I protect myself and kill you first. Do what you must. Though if you do any promise, you'll go and kill and my wife. Don't let a woman live without something to live for. That on my word and soul. Then he was good till the hell the devil got in. Now I've been sent to put out the fire. And God give me the strength to do it. You'll surely need it. The men collide like bulls. Their hands, horns, they clench one another's necks, then freeze. Their body is formed, the mouth of a cave. Into horsepower, 72, holding a lantern and his staff. He enters the cave, followed by Wonderful. Age 16, red as honey, with beautifully white and napped hair. Flash forward, the year is 1866. Of course, We rest here. This cave be the mouth of a mountain. We sit here on its lip and wait for heaven's freckles to burn through the blanket of night. It's them starry freckles that will tell your story, wonderful. Way up there? How my history get way up there in the sky, old horse? At night, every man can see his story written on God's black face. During the day, God hides it behind his hot smile and cloudy beard. But at night, while he keeps his white eye open, his freckles glow a sparkling gold. So, that if a man seeking God's face reaches his hand to the sky, he'll cause a spark. It's with that spark that a man can chart his story. He can trace his past, find his calling, and if he's wise, he can foretell his fate. Oh, that's a lot. I don't know if I want to know all that. I'd rather hear a bedtime tale or an old joke. Joke? You think this supposed to be funny? No, I... You think I'm, I ain't got nothing better to do than to sneak out of the house knowing how vengeful and bitch dog your grandma can be? I'm reading the stars for your benefit, boy. You 15. Actually, I'm 16. Same thing, you just carried a one. <laughs> My point be, you at the fork in the road or not. You could go left, but you might get left. You could go right, 
but it might not be right. Only the stars can chart your course. You need your history, and you need it now. But what if I don't like it? What if my story's bad? Piss and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no such thing as a bad history. There's only a bad way to tell it. You need to know where your fathers came from so you don't go down the same roads they got lost on. You need to know where, what's in your blood. Wonderful? Yeah, I suppose you're right. Cause I'm right. I'm 72 years old. I'm wise as books. <laughs> now, give me your hand so I can wake up your star. I ain't got all night. Horse power lifts his cane and wraps Wonderful's hand around it. He guides the cane to a star. The star burns into a comet. Then other constellations cruise across the sky as we fall back into time. <laughs>
and drawbridge pull rings that are nailed to the stage floor. They move as if on horses, watching them ride. Was well, like watching fire chase vampires. Drawbridge had to leave because his horse was younger and a better breed. But number two had an edge because Mule knew that if he didn't win, he was going to be served up for supper like a brisket. <laughs> ha! Ah, they ran harder. No one saw who reached the creek first. It was too far away. We had good eyes to see from where they stood. Number two said he got there first. But as soon as he hopped off his mule, Trowbridge knocked him down, riding his horse, then stuck his pike in the land. But Trowbridge said that was a lie. He said number two rolled his mule so hard, it collapsed on top of him, and he just a poor loser. Either way, Trowbridge's pike was stuck in the mud, and number two was wounded. So I had to do what was right. I declared Trowbridge land owner. Number two falls defeated. Trowbridge sticks his pike into the land and does a victory dance. And this like to had killed number two. He spent most of his life buying his freedom and this was his one chance. He had to own something worth slaving for. He spat blood from the bitter taste in his mouth, took his wife, Mary South, and moved across the creek into the woods till the day he got a taste for sweet revenge. And this, my boy, is how your story begins. The scene fades as wind song hums. We return to 1850. Act one, the Old Testament, or why the well ran dry. Enter Sweet Tea, age 16, a vision in a patchwork skirt. She walks through the woods at a fast pace, as if being followed. Suddenly, her father jumps out from behind a tree. Daddy's me! Ah! Oh, Pa, you scared me. So, you're lucky as me and not those slave catching creeks. I thought I told you to be in the house on Sunday. You did, but Ma needed me to pick up powder milk at the trade post. I'll be just a breath. Breath or not, I don't like to lock your lady night. Yeah, but you want your peach pie, don't you, Pa? Can't make peach pie without powdered milk now, can I? <laughs> can I, Pa? Oh, well, you right. <laughs> Hurry back in, and don't stop for nothing, hear me? She walks off. Loud and clear. He exits. We hear and see a silver creek in the wood, down in Africa. Kimonaro, Kimonaro, Kimonaro. Captain Caro, Captain Caro, Captain Caro. Good bird, age 16. Angelic takes off his shoes and steps into the creek. Seminachi, Seminachi, Seminachi. Verminachi, Verminachi, Verminachi. Enter sweet tea. Oh, God, there she is, heaven in the flesh, and the reason my flesh be so weak. You're late, gal. She steps in the water. Apologies. It was hard for me to get away. My pa went on me literally like I'm sticky, asking me all questions and staring at me for no reason except his guest to try and look into my soul. He said he's nervous that some Greek Indian's gonna snatch me up, but I know better. I'm afraid you know about his broken. It's breaking his heart. Oh, he's a big man, sweet. If he gets broken, he'll heal. We can't be worried about our folks no more. We're too young for it. Plus, it's them that got the bad blood. Our duty is to love and make love and make love last. Yeah, I suppose. Just sometimes I wish we up and leave here. Pack our bags, hitch a wagon, and walk into the ocean to live as fish. We spend our days neck to neck, looking into each other's big old eyes and swimming. And we have a whole school of children, too. A whole school? Who's going to feed a whole school? The ocean! And we forget about this dusty town and the heat and the farm and Creek Indians trying to slave us for bad blood between our paws. We'd be happy. We'd be fishing. <laughs> you something strange, gal. I don't want to be no fish. Hell, I just got to hang up being a man. And I likes it. I likes being your man. And you know what else I likes? He grabs her by the waist. Boy, you a mess. 
Yup, and my wife's getting me nervous. ass. <laughs> Fix her up. <laughs> Dang, you got heavy. What you been eating? Anything I can get my hands on. But it ain't the food that's got me big bird. I got to tell you. It don't matter. I likes you around. There's no <laughs> need for me to lay my lips on. He bathed the turd with some They make mm, nature. Mm. A stir. Mm. A finger lurks uh, in the shadow. Uh, oh, you hear something? No, I don't hear a thing. Not a thing at all. There was a stir. Mm. Somebody's here. You best go. You best go home now. But I thought we was getting fishy. <laughs> Not tonight. I got a bad feeling in my gut. Let's meet tomorrow. There's something I've been wanting to tell you. Something I got to lay on your heart. Sweet tea rises from the creek. You just got here. Yeah. And if I'm in here, I'll never leave. She kisses him and exits. Well, heads. What a way to kill a rooster. <laughs> The good bird rises from the water and leans against a tree to dry off. Time. A figure snatches him from behind the tree and drags him into the woods. We hear the swift stab of a fork into flesh and the flap of wings. A stream of blood slithers into the creek. All goes dark. Emma Jean enters, drawing the curtain of a glorious dawn over the night sky. She wears a flounced skirt and a cape made from flower sacks. I need thee. Sweet tea. 
into Trowbridge from behind. Mona, holy shit, it's you. Tis, how come y'all ain't work? It appears the well run dry, sir. Horse just giving us a rain dance to fill it. What about this business? Colorado ain't number two expecting you across the creek? Yes, Papa. Yes, boss, but I, I, I waiting for some water to brush my hair. I got to put these naps on my head to sleep. Boy, you fine enough for a Friday. Get going. If you get any pretty, I'm gonna make you wear a dress. Fat Rev, how come you ain't run the church bell? Folks rely on you to wake them rumps up, so move yours. And then, Jean, when you plan on opening the school? School don't start till high noon, Sheriff, when the children come back from farm work. Don't matter. It's high enough for light, which means you need to teach. Our children ain't getting any smarter on account of you. Yes, sir. Mary, if you will. Damn shame. I got, I got to remind folks to pay a job every morning. Last thing I want to be is somebody's mass and looking. I done turned into my heart. Horse power? Horse is still listening to the wedding. What, boy? I'm busy. You're needed at the trade post. Good bird didn't come home last night. My wife got a shipment coming in from Kansas. She needs to help her unbox. So? What I'm supposed to do about this well? There's nothing you can do but wait for rain. In the meantime, we'll use the creek. We won't go at night and we won't go alone. We'll be like the wind, do our own sort of dancing. So spread the word. The wells run dry and the creek is now our new nurse home. Mm. Trowbridge exits. Sweet tea passes horsepower. Who stops it? Oh, you should be ashamed. Pardon? Your bird wish drunk up the well. Now you got to cry to save our town. You got to break the law and weep. But why? I don't understand. Ask the well. I'm just an echo. Ask the stones. He exits. Sweet he looks in the well. Um, hello? I'm hello. Hello? Ah. Well? Well, why are you dry? Why? Why won't you cry? Ah. Are you thirsty? Hello. I thirsty. She looks around. Well, I can try and, and weep for you well. And I, I will reach for you, gal. Sweet tea lifts her head. Let's see. I haven't cried since I was five or so. I suppose I should think of a sad thought. I can make it in my mind. Send it to my eyes and they'll, well, spring for the tear. Yes, I'll weep. Hold on, well, I need to mind some sadness. Jean and Mary sit on the chapel steps. The Lord spoke to me this morning while I was praying, sister. He said he's fed up with our heathen ways and was moved to drink our water. Next, you said plagues. Plagues? I can't deal with no plagues. It takes me three weeks to recover from a dust storm. What kind of plagues? Is it frogs? I can fry frog legs if it's frogs. He showed me the image of a man crawling out the belly of a wave. Good bird crawls out of the well, wet and cut up. Sweet tea screams. Ah! It was Pharaoh's firstborn, and he was dying. Good bird! Bird, is that you? Sweet. And Egypt cried over him like a child. Good bird, what happened? How'd you get in there? I love. I love thee so, so, bird. Wait, where are you going? His eyes close. Hey, good bird. Hey, good. Don't leave me alone, please. Don't go without us growing old. Stay on my eyes, bird. Bird, if you go, go with my eyes. And he died. Just like he came, wet curled up in some women's breasts. Good bird's spirit flies. As I came to a messy. His death would bring you life. The Lord was telling me to pick up the raw, sister. He said I've sat out of way too long, while Levi, like my grandpa upon the sheriff, have kept our minds in bondage until they turned from their ways. They'll be plagued, sister. They won't be floods. Well, I'm on your side, First Lady, but what can we do? This Trowbridge is land and horsepower is our elder. They're just doing what they think is best. Man can't serve two masters, Mary South. You've got to pick a side. God has anointed me to be Moses to lead his people. Now all I need is a help. 
mate. What about your husband, Red? He's a glutton and a yellow belly. I'm going to need a woman to stand side of me. Paul had Silas. Moses had Aaron. And although I wouldn't likely choose a full blood Seminola, God has chosen me to be your sister. Won't you answer the call? Mama! Mama! Oh, that's my girl. I'll think I'll make it back to you, sister. All right, then. Go forth and be blessed. And you, be blessed. Prophetess. How'd I lose you when everything was good? When everything was right? The sweets, what's the matter? Good bird! My good bird's gone! Sheriff's boy? That's the sheriff's boy? Yeah, Ma. I can't feel my heart. He's cold. I best get his father to the stay. He's dead. Merciful. How, daughter? I can't figure. He came here half out of himself, out of the well. The well? Like he was coming up for air. I suppose he climbed up, but I don't know how long he was down there. Maybe who threw, who cut him up, threw him down. Oh, his mother can be a foul, evil thing. When she finds out she'll gut and appetite worse off than a pack of kites. Best we make sure we have no part in this bill. Be a good girl and help me drag the body to the bush. Like a dog? He was mine. My beloved. Your beloved what? My one. My man, and I am not ashamed of it, and I won't be. Whoa. This good one is yours. You got a man against your pa and eyes, and I brought this one. You know how your father feels about his kid. What do I want him now? He's gone. And I don't much care what my pa feels. I love him. And I won't have you shaking him over his body. No, oh, but of course. Yes, we not tell your pa and let things die then, huh? Don't know how I can keep it. You can keep it this long you can. Let's move him before he gets a stink. And careful of his side, there's something sticking there. Below his wing. Sweet tea pulls the tooth. What is it? The tooth of a pitchfork, looks like. Come, we'll take him to the chapel, but we won't cry. For this our way, we women labor out the bodies of the world. I'll need a half to bring him in. Mary pockets the tooth. They pick up Goodbird's body and exit. Near the creek, number two combs his corn stalks with a pitchfork. He takes a drink. Young Trowbridge enters with a spear, wearing nothing but a loincloth. It is 1823, Indian town of Florida. Uh, excuse me? Shh. What you mean, shh? I can see your ass. Shh, I said. I'm hunting the black bear. Where? Ain't no bear gonna come through here. He's just beyond those trees, in the bush, eating beauty berries. There's a stir in the bush. Oh, is that how you got naked? That bear ate your clothes? No, and I ain't naked. This is warrior's armor. It's called a sackcloth. <laughs> well, if that's a sack, it ain't holding much. And if that's cloth, you didn't get your money's worth. Ain't you cold as a well digger's butt? I'm the son of a seminal chief. I don't get cold. <laughs> now, shh. I must face the bear and run my spear through his heart. He creeps closer. Well, ain't this head scratching? I ain't never seen a half-naked man sneak up to a bear. Be like a chicken with no feathers walking up to a wolf. Where I come at, where I come from, we call that free food. Shh. There must be silence when I kill him. It's my rite of passage. To leave the Tawa in quest of the Echo. I must bring the black bear home to feed my tribe at the Green Corn Festival. This is the beginning of my story. It looks like it's going to be a short story. <laughs> you can't kill no bear with that twig you call a spear. You need to set a trap. I'll help you for a horse and somewhere to lay my head for the night. No, don't need it. Besides, I can tell you a runaway by them shackles on your feet. It's against the law to give a runaway slave a horse in these swamps. Fine, but you wasted my talents. I know how to squeeze a bear and what to sing in his ear so he sleeps, even where to lay him down. My master was a Creek Indian and he taught me the secret song. Don't matter. Only Indians can wrestle with the wild with secret chants. Niggers ain't got the blood for it. My pa says you're good for making nature grow because you got strong hands, but it means you belong in the field. And what he know? Your pa ain't God. I know God, he say I can wrestle any nature comes my way. He gives me a gift for it. Bully. God made you dark because you belong at the bottom. Even when a man look under his feet, he find blackness. And that means something. Yeah, I mean he dirty. You need to clean his feet. <laughs> Young number two wrestles him. Time. The shadow of the bear appears. The growl. He licking his lips. Let's run. Number two grabs him. You crazy? Stay still. You can't run from no bear. We gotta look into his eyes. If we stare him down, he'll let us see into his soul. Then what? Then I sing. They turn towards the bear's shadow. 
The bear growls again. They stare. Maki mata, maka ka, kali paka, maka ka. In shadow, the bear bows and exits. Told you. Negroes can wrestle the wild just like Indians. But, you're something else. You say, maybe I found the black bear after all. What you mean? Why are you looking at me like that? Because. He points his spear at young number two. You gonna be mine. <coughs> My man. Number two walks from his memory. As lights fade, revealing Mary South. Woman. May I talk with you, Spell? I'm working. It's urgent. There's been a happening. Good bird, Trowbridge's boy. We found him dead in the well. Don't know how we got there, but we moved him to the chapel and our hands are no body. How you find a man in the well that you? He found out, I suppose. You know it ain't no water now. He would have drowned if it was. Something lived in him. A wanting. There was water in that well yesterday. Somebody's been met. Husband, what if this mother thinks we had some pot in the act for killing? Who said he was killed? I figured he must have been because of the cuts. Plus, I found a prod, some tools, two pierced in the side. From there, I reasoned he was stabbed. Stabbed? Who said that? His body said something went at him with hate. Bold and blind, my guess, he was cut up and tossed in the well to be lost in the darkness. But the killer wasn't so bright. Most birds don't drown, you know. Most can swim. That's so. Of course, everybody knows birds. She sees the missing tooth on his pitchfork. Hello. Help me, Jesus. What is it? What you see, Mary? Nothing. I don't see nothing, I swear. Then you're not looking good enough. Look closer to me. What you see? I see a gap. I see there's something between us I didn't know. <coughs> and don't want to now. That bird was making nature with our dog. Did you know that? Only recent, only this morning. And you weren't going to tell me? Was, soon as you would have. You killed him, number two. You killed the sheriff's only child. Well, you would have got away with it, except for you taking the body from the tomb. Merciful Savior, why? That bird was making nature with our dog. The seed of my enemy plotting his own in the soil of my girl. Couldn't sleep with the thought of him flying off with her in my dream. Couldn't get no work done. But it's quiet now. Just listen. <coughs> it's ever so quiet. His mother will bite down on us. That hot George will torture us slow as ticks in time. Can you be that foolish? Don't you know her power? That witch may have tricks in her bag, but she knows about me. She can't even breathe on me and cause a chill. I'm God. Maybe in your eyes, but I lay with you. If you were a god, certain things would be magnificent. I don't like your wife now, your mouth not like If she lays a hand on my child, if she plucks even a strand of hair, I will match my daughter's pain with yours. Twofold. If she barely scratches her, I will cut your neck while you sleep. Quiet. It will be ever so quiet. Mary starts to exit, but he stops her. Hold. Let me be. Hold. I said I would be. If I hold you, love it. If I touch you, be still. I bring peace with your needs are to please me, to make lust and children for me, not to lay threats. No, myself. You lay your body on me and perhaps a blanket when I am cold. I'm your God. You are to serve me. What's this? What has this hate done to you? Where's my man? Put him to sleep. What you don't know about me is that I was a twin. I shared my mother's womb with a brother who wrapped his cord around my neck. Fought me in my mother's belly in space. He was alike as a pair of hands. When he came out number one, big and black. And I came out number two, blue as deep water, with a white mark across my chest. I suppose this caused everyone to cheat me like such. Always got the seconds. Always walked behind. It's always forgotten. Till 16 years when the mark took the shape of a fist. And something grew inside me I could no longer keep down. So I was forced to take action. Take the lead and push my brother from the top of the tree. The quiet, he was no rock, my brother. He burst into pieces at first crash. I figured that's what killed my mom. Drove my father crazy, forced me to run away. This mark, you and I both knew it grows still, Mary. The charges we urged me to be number one. Post-promise says it's the mark of the white sun. Its shape means my life is no end. 
not can only be killed by my own blood. No blade, no gun, a curse can take me down. I tested it. Last Sunday, when horse read my story, climbed the mountain, leapt into the sky, swallowed the sun, and did not die. It's true, why? I'm immortal. If you believe that, then I marry a fool, and that makes me a fool's wife. <laughs> that makes me laugh, and that makes me think life is funny. That makes me want to cry. I have to tell Half George about her child. You best tell Trowbridge you killed the son. You best solve this, or you'll need to swallow more than the son to come for revenge. Mary exits. M. Jean and Fat Rev walk to the well as people pass, carrying pails from the creek. Just one moment. Before we continue, can we just um, let each of us just take a sip of water? <laughs> take just a little bit of it. Um, can I have somebody bring me uh, some water? Give me back my bird. How'd he go? 
How do you fly? Don't know. I found them in the web. Cut. Cut? How? And by who? The question of mine. I was his beloved. Me and your son, we were together from sunsets. He was my wife. He was your what? My man. Your bird was mine. Time. Of course. He tried to tell me he was in love. No wonder he kept it. There is hate between me and your pa. That's why he couldn't say your name. Don't hate me, sir. I love... I know. I knew such love once. But worry not. His death will take a life. I'll hunt the killer out and cut off his head. Inside the trade store, Hal George cans tobacco. She is a thick, handsome woman with hair white as George Washington's wig. Enter Mary South with a fruit basket. Evening, Hal George. How are you? Store is so pretty, you'd think it was springtime in November. Is this new calico? I'll take three yards of this and some red roof when it moves here. Sweet tea is doing new blast, though Lord knows I can't afford it. May I also have some coal, a jar of molasses, and powdered milk? You're looking healthy today, half George. I like that color on you, it brings out your womanly features. Yeah. Well, I was just passing through, plum picking and carrying on. Thought you might be needing some fruit for your preserves. Who said I preserves? I like my fruit to fit my nature. Hard and rotten. Well, I believe that makes us all different. Some of us is soft and peachy. Others are hard and rotten, but we all got good centers. Sometimes you just got to peel away the rotten parts to get to all the sweet, but we all good and got good centers. <laughs> You sound like you think you done made some golden discovery. I can look and tell folks got good centers. I figured that when I was five. You one dumb woman, Mary Savage. Oh, come on. <laughs> Fine, I will. I wanted to tell you it before, but didn't care enough to make it plain. Guess I do now. Here it is. I thinks you the dumbest bell ever rung in this dust wall town. I thinks you hollow, thick, clang. And if I had my way, I'd silence your chime. I'd stick a nice size rock down your throat and stitch your two lips together to make a hammer. And if you choked, it would be an oh well. Life is hard enough with a rooster's cockatoo awaken me every morning, sometimes sky thunder waken me in the dead of night. But having to endure your empty talk, you coming in here acting like we're friends but needing something, makes me want to beat you, knock you down, makes me want to stand on your head like a cliff to see a better view of the ocean. What say I come back and see how to bring her? What say you buy or trade now? You look like you need something. Yeah, well, in truth, I do need a thing. I don't bother in fruit and cake. You can leave that basket for my good bird, though. He's got a sweet tooth. Your good bird, you say? Yeah. What you got he can drink, smoke, or fuck with. You haven't heard? Heard what? Nobody ever talks to a witch. Your boy? Your boy's gone. Gone? Oh. This is about your sweet tea, ain't it? Well, chicks come home to roost. What can I say I ain't thought before? My boy has a sweet tooth. Couldn't keep it from your farm. He's sprung, and so is his dicky. Did she run away with him? They'll be back. Good bird don't stay gone too long. He's picky and don't eat any woman's bread. Plus, I heard yours don't know how to knead. Where'd they run to? They didn't. No, I wish they had from He's dead, half George. Not dead. Flies away for long periods of time. His father does the same when he gets mad. Men always running. It's because they got fears of being forced off land. Makes them angry. I saw the body. I had it. Brought it to the chapel myself. I even got some of his blood up in my dress. She shows a blood stain. I didn't want to break your heart with me, but no man was man enough to do it. He's dead, and it was his body that burst the well. My gut told me to keep him in. Told me to mind him. Take my time for his. What he would have given you in love, I'll give you in labor. Why come? No reason. I just feel sorry for you. I want to offer my hand. Hand for what? 
What? You ain't never offered it before. You ain't never needed it, but we the same. I'm passing all the time. Tree stump, then grind runs to make soft 
Men covered their faces with warrior paint and loud guns, and they load guns. Trowbridge carries the body of his son into the trade post where half George cleans. There's garbage and bowl of meal on the stove. You should eat. Boss will be here at dawn to start the barrack. Don't matter. I am hungry. Still, you should eat. Your heart may be heavy, but your gut still needs attention. I'll heat your plate. Don't bother. I'm going out for air. He grabs his gun. You don't need your gun for air. I, I do if I can't breathe. And I won't be able until I kill someone. A group of men falls before me in a posse at the foot of the mountain comes sunset. To avenge good, to avenge good bird's death, they're going to raid the Creek Indian camp and kill the chief. With or without me, they'll have his head. For what? Can't you use yours? You know the Creeks didn't have nothing to do with this. They've been threatening us for 16 years, Georgia. Creeping around our town at night, watching us like hawks. I could feel their eyes on my back. Those weren't Creek eyes. Just look. Look at your son and see who left their mark on his body. Who got hands strong enough to choke a neck? Who carries a pitchfork? It's not him. I know that he would never do this. Ever since we moved here, he's been stewing. His hate for you haven't grown so hot, he won't even cross the creek. Man sends his wife and his gal to fetch goods or packages. He can't even stand to look at you long enough to buy a box of tobacco. And you think he won't kill your boy? You don't know him like I. We go back sunsets, days and nights, just us for years. We only chose to hate each other because our love was so strong it would have killed us. But he died for me. He'd never kill mine. For his gal, he would. If he saw your boy with his girl and felt that love was going to wound her like it did him, he'd kill yours to save his. I know for a fact, cuz his wife came and told me. She even left his tooth. She shows him the tooth. I'll kill him. Can't. He's got the mark. Horsepower says he can only be killed by his own blood. We got to get at him another way. Don't matter. Gotta kill him tonight while I'm thirsty. You not listening. You the sheriff. You got to be the law and arrest him. You got to call off that raid before sundown. Before those men go kill the wrong one, or worse yet, get killed. But I wanna hug him. You do, and you're gonna be dead. Don't matter. Don't matter? You dead, and it don't matter. What about me? I matter? I ain't strong as you, Georgia. It's the one thing that keeps me in your arms, your awesome strength. Perhaps you're my man and me. Just kisses. But I can't live without my vengeance quits. I gotta touch him. He kisses him forward. Listen to me. You go and stop that raid. You look me in the eyes and tell me you're gonna stop that raid, Trowbridge. He grabs his axe and a sack. Been so, so long since I touched him. So long. He exits. Outside, bowls of softy and fruit are left on the porch. You stop that rage, Trowbridge. Don't leave a woman lonely in this world like most men do. Like most kin. Like even most gods. She unveils her child's body. She prays. Number two skips rocks in the creek. It sparks a new memory. Young number two is revealed under sunlight skipping rocks in the water. And her young Trowbridge. I can show you how to skip rocks, number two. I'm a master at it. Show me how to leap off a cliff if you want to show me something. Oh, somebody's hot. You mad because I'm going west with old horse? No, but I care. Likes to be on my lonesome anyway. And with you gone, I'll finally be free. Be my own master. That's what you want, ain't it? Been what I wanted all my life. Then why are you hot? Don't know. Maybe because of the heat? Oh. Figured you'd be used to Florida swamp by now. Maybe it's because I'm so close to you. Maybe I make you heated. He puts his arms around young Trowbridge's waist. They, re they wrestle. Don't touch me. It ain't normal. So neither is your aim. You want to skip a rock best lead it to water. And use your hips more. Ain't you ever made love? I've made plenty of things. Hmm. That mean no? I could teach you a swing or two, but you have to come west and help me build a town with a little horse. Why would I do that? Like you said, I'm free. And you'd still be. You'd just be free with me. Might as well. I know you got the hot stuff. Ha! You've been dreaming. Stay asleep. Young Trowbridge kisses him. Hmm. Looks like we both woke. 
sun and moon move into the same house, a solar eclipse. The creek turns black. Number two winks and sees Trowbridge. Moonlight falls. We return to the standoff. I've been sent to put out your fire. Then God give you the strength to do it. You're sure to need him. Ah! They collide, choke each other. Time. Take this breath, Trowbridge. No! Won't sleep. Take it, I said. Be with your son. Number two's hands meet. No. Burn. Air. He takes his last breath. We hear a wind song. He dies. Number two lays him in the creek, cuts off his hair braid, and pockets it. He walks into the wood and comes upon horsepower. Your fated day is here, number two. The mark of the white sun that grows on your chest. The breath maker's fire has risen. Stolen by a rabbit, swallowed by your paw. It lives wholly in you now. Only you can keep us from being made slaves. Bring the heat, number two. You hear them cries in the night? Follow them and put them creek Indians on their knees. You are the sun. So burn! Set them masses on fire! A scream. Uh, in the woods, sweet tea lies against a tree. Uh, I can't do it here, Ma. I can't have my baby in the woods. You can, you strong. You can't uh, stop. Just uh, breathe for me. That's it, babe. Keep breathing for Ma. That's it. An owl flies to a nearby tree. Uh, I think he's coming. Oh God! God blood! Ah! At the camp, Red and Colorado take shelter from gunfire. Colorado is cut. You gonna be all right. Just run the church into your wound, Colorado. We're outnumbered, Red. Trophy's never ah. showed and the creek's got the upper hand. It's over. We're as good as dead. No, just push, baby. You're gonna be fine.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to go in that house. Well, she gave that George. Yeah. Uh, you mean with the moon? Yeah. Yeah, he's never to just walking out of the moon. Lots of free time.
So I am going to creep out in an hour. Yes. What time is it? I'm going to do it as uh, unobtrusively as Oh, okay. Okay, we can change that.